G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for another trade update. Yes, of course, trades can still happen up until November 10th, uh, but the rules are now that it can only be for draft picks. No players can be swapped, but naturally there are still going to be a few rumors swirling around uh, what happens, particularly with pick one, but also some other picks in the first round. And today's video is about a little bit of an update as to where all the talk about pick one sits. Uh, we know that the Eagles obviously hold pick one and have been posturing publicly about they're probably going to take Harley Reid, but they would be open to an extraordinary deal uh, coming their way if one presented itself. We know we talked in the past about how North Melbourne, Melbourne, and to a lesser extent Hawthorne have been in the race to try and trade for pick one. But in today's video, we have some updates via Cal Toomey as to what is actually being offered. There has been some new offers, improved offers from those various clubs, and uh, we'll take a look at exactly what is going down from a negotiation point of view. So a bit of background, we know that during the trade period there was a brief discussion between North Melbourne and West Coast during the trade period we saw or were heard about rather an offer of 15 18 21 and an end of first round selection in the future next year's draft in exchange for West Coast pick one and this was subsequently rejected and to be honest I think it was probably laughed out the door the Eagles can't possibly uh, have a season this bad and enter the draft at pick 15 in this year's draft so to clarify as well that future first round pick that North Melbourne offered as part of this deal was a priority pick next year which has been subsequently traded to both Sydney and the Gold Coast Suns um, so that offer is null and void but that was a fair way off getting West Coast to really come to the table with a negotiation. But since then, we've heard a renewed offer. During the trade period as well, we know that Hawthorne came pretty hard for pick one. It was reported that as part of the Tyler Brockman deal, Hawthorne wanted pick one in exchange for pick four in this year's draft, which Hawthorne currently hold, Hawthorne's future first round pick and Tyler Brockman. And this was obviously rejected because Tyler Brockman made his way in a separate deal. This on paper is actually a pretty strong offer from a Hawks point of view. So pick four in this year's draft is, uh, is a three pick downgrade. A future first round pick from Hawthorne could would be quite juicy or it might not be and that's probably the risk uh, that West Coast observed with this particular offer because Hawthorne sure if they finished third last again that's pick three in next year's draft so pick three four and Brockman on paper is a very good deal but there is the very real risk I would say that Hawthorne bounce up the ladder and get at least around uh, around the mark for finals and if they do that suddenly becomes pick 10 so four ten and Brockman still nothing to sneeze at but I think what West Coast looking at here in terms of my personal opinion trying to read the situation West Coast want probably pick two as a minimum for trading pick one. The reason being, in my personal opinion, it's not so much Daniel Curtin that they want. I think there's a really real possibility that West Coast think that McKercher is probably the only other player that they would trade this pick for. That's why they want pick two. That's why pick three and four aren't good enough. Dersma, Curtin, whoever. In my opinion, it seems like McKercher is the guy and I understand why he's the best next available midfielder in this year's draft. So that's what we knew about already. And just giving back a little bit of context as well, Rowan O'Brien going into the trade period. Sorry for non-Eagles fans, Rowan O'Brien is the Eagles list manager. But he said that uh, at this stage, they expect West Coast to go to the draft with pick one, and it would have to be a massive offer to turn their heads to make them interested in the trade. I wouldn't read too much into this. I, I think West Coast is just doing their part in terms of posturing a little bit, trying to retain some negotiating power, making it sound like they don't want to trade pick one at all to you know bump up trade offers. So my personal opinion is that West Coast is actually very open to trading pick one, but uh, we'll go on to what was actually offered as recently as yesterday, or at least what was reported yesterday. So Cal Toomey via the Gettable show slash podcast, whatever you want to call it, said that North came with an improved offer since their uh, four late first round pick offer, which was uh, North Melbourne getting picks one and 23 from West Coast, but West Coast getting pick two and then two selections out of 15, 17 and 18. Considering this is North who offered it and the way it's phrased, it was probably two, 17 and 18 for one and 23. So really it's an improvement of 23 to 18 and pick two and 17 for pick one. This was rejected, okay? So we're now getting a real feel for what is the threshold likely to get West Coast interest, and it is still higher than what North Melbourne offered. Toomey also reported on an offer from the Melbourne Football Club, which included six, 11, a future first round pick, which is likely to be around the 15 to 17 mark if uh, if Melbourne make top four again, and pick 42 in this year's draft, which we uh, can safely assume I think Melbourne don't intend to use anyway. That was also rejected. So I think the logic here is that West Coast again want a pick in the top two picks. But what is interesting about this as well is that North Melbourne have improved their offer to at least include pick two. So now they're actually a little bit more serious about a trade offer. We know the first one was a little bit of a piss take. I think Brady Rawlings uh, suggested it was a throw at the start 
stumps and it was well short of the mark. And this isn't a much improved offer, which is still proven to be short of the mark. Some interesting comments as well from Jay Clark, who also reported on this story. And he says that the Eagles do not want multiple team picks, that is multiple picks in the teens, unless it is accompanied by multiple picks in the top 10. Reading between the lines here, it does seem like Jay Clark might have some sort of source close to the West Coast Eagles because he kind of reports from the perspective of the Eagles in terms of what they would actually want. He makes the comment that recruiters agree that the talent drops off after pick 10. So, you know, compared to previous years, picks in the teens don't have the same value because there is a, a sharp drop off in talent. We know this year is probably going to have less picks than ever. Jay Clark also reports that two and three would be enough to tempt West Coast, as you'd expect. That is a ridiculously good offer for them. But he does also report that the Kangaroos are not interested in that deal, as we would also expect. Toomey then also made the following uh, comments about these rejected deals. He says, there are four main takeaways. Harley is another level good. Well, yeah, that's true. We kind of already knew that. The same reason other clubs want him is the same reason it would take a lot for this pick to actually move. He makes the same point that I just said, which is that teen picks don't have the same certainty this year as in other years. And finally as well, there's not much point doing much negotiating now. If a deal's going to happen at all, it's probably going to happen closer to the draft, which I agree with. Kane Corns also chimed in a little bit, uh, as you'd expect. He has uh, been red hot on the Eagles this year. and make, He made the comment, are they crazy or do they know something we don't? I found it interesting that his angle on this was that West Coast are crazy for reject rejecting it, not that North and Melbourne are, are crazy for offering those deals to begin with, but whatever. But yeah, so the interesting developments, I guess, out of this story is uh, two things. We know that North Melbourne are pretty serious about trying to get pick one. Not serious enough yet to offer pick two and three. I think that would be a big surprise. But for all the posturing, you know, negotiations are still happening. So both parties are still probably interested in a deal happening. I think that probably rules Melbourne out. Melbourne cannot offer anything better than that, considering they can't offer for a player in this scenario. 6, 11 and a future first is the absolute maximum that Melbourne can offer in this scenario unless they somehow do some rejigging and trade their future first into this year's top 10 combined with something else it would require a lot of legwork so I think Melbourne are just about ruled out of this. The other thing I say as well is that you know this far out from the draft I don't think this is North's final offer to be honest. I think West Coast is in a good position here um, for North Melbourne to be offering that level of a trade which is somewhat generous. I'm not saying I would accept it. In fact I would have rejected it too. But to be honest, my gut feeling here is that this isn't North's final offer. And I do think the best offer that West Coast could possibly get is probably when the clock starts on pick one at the 2023 draft. I suspect West Coast know this too, and I could see this deal potentially going down to the absolute wire. And you just got to feel for Harley Reid in this scenario as well. He doesn't know. In fairness, no draftee actually knows. It's actually rare that players really know where they're going to go this far out from the draft. So I guess he's kind of like everyone else, but there's so much uncertainty around this pick one. For me, as I've said previously, I think West Coast will do it if they get pick two and then something else in the top 10. I think that's probably what it's going to require. I know there's North fans out there. The vast majority of North fans don't actually support offering a deal that good, but I'm trying to offer a prediction of what will happen. If I was North, I'd go to the draft with pick two and three. I think they can't really lose from that. Having said that though, there's one thing to be uh, to bear in mind with this particular Harley Reid deal is that this is North's real one chance to get him, okay? Because respectfully, if North Melbourne think that they can trade Harley Reid in in two or three years when he's out of contract, they're suddenly going to be competing with teams like Collingwood, Richmond, Geelong, Hawthorne, who are all going to be clamoring to get Harley Reid. And historically, North Melbourne, I haven't been good at luring players to their club. So there probably is a real sense that if North Melbourne don't get pick one uh, to draft Harley Reid, he's never going to play for him. Similarly, if, you know, if I'm a, a big Victorian club who likes the look of Harley Reid, you know, a Melbourne aside, I'd probably be hoping that West Coast draft him because there's more chance of you trading Harley Reid in after his first contract at West Coast than necessarily trading him in from North Melbourne, you'd have thought. I could be wrong, but just some general musings. But uh, that is the update on the Harley Reid potential trade, the pick one potential trade. He's technically not in the AFL yet, so he can't be traded. But interesting times. I think we're getting a feel for how much West Coast really rate this kid, or at least we're getting a feel for how much West Coast understand the value of Harley Reid. Again, I, I really think that West Coast will end up doing this trade, but I think it will be for something better than what was offered. Maybe maybe something in the middle. But as always, guys, I welcome your thoughts and opinions in the comments section below. Where do you think Harley Reid ends up? Do you think West Coast should have accepted these deals? And if so, which one? And of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks, guys. I'll see you in the next one.